Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-12. A loud gurgle came from the back of the party, and the members turned around to look squarely at the shortest member of the group. Sorry, replied Phidias. The iron rations aren't agreeing with me. As they shook their heads, the party moved forward and moved along a curve with a steep ravine running next to it. After an hour of travel, they spotted a flicker of lights casting a dim shadow on the far wall of the cavern and low voices could be heard. Grish called for everyone to stop and motioned for the gnome to approach. In hushed tones, he told Phidias to move up and see what was beyond. Silently, the diminutive rogue crept forward. The party gripped their weapons, occasionally glancing over the drop. Sir Omel found the presence of giant footprints in the dirt and alerted everyone to the potential danger. After a few tense minutes, Phidias reappeared in front of them. Well, said Brother Stance. The group formed a circle around the rogue as he explained what he saw. So there are three hulking giants a couple hundred yards away, in front of a big fire. They aren't as big as the pair we fought back at the shrine, but there are three of them. We would have to cross a pretty good distance to attack, and they would all have time to prepare for an assault. Is that it? asked Yolanda. Well, they were eating some type of sheep, and it was rather tasty. The group rose to their feet and gave him a disapproving look. What? I told you I was hungry, he exclaimed. The group hunched down again to listen to his recitation. The gnome drew the layout with his finger in the dirt, finishing up with, there's an exit to the, another cave beyond them, and it goes deeper into the mountain. The group knelt pensively, attempting to formulate a plan. Is it wide enough for all three of us to get in? asked Sir Omel. Yes, but there is a choke point just after this curve. Once we go around this angle, we pass between two stone pillars and into the main cavern. We have to be careful because the curve is sharp and the ravine is quite close. I'm actually rather impressed that the behemoths can get around it. Would we be able to form a good line against them? asked Sir Omel. Yes, but only after we get past the pillars, and then we would sub be subjected to their flaking, as you call it. Flanking, Yolanda corrected him. Right, flanking. We could bottleneck them at the pillars, but one good whack will send us into the ravine. Sir Omel, Grish the cleric, Yolanda, and Brother Stance then began to argue about the presence of three of the giants after the beating they took against just two. The group began to pepper Phidias with a variety of questions when Harris the mage silenced them. Shh, hang on a second. The group stopped and looked to the slender wizard. How big is the gap between the pillars, Phidias? Eh, probably not more than 20 feet, I'd say. Why? Well, I have an idea, was the mage's response. After explaining his plan, Grish shook his head. I don't know, that seems like a big risk to me. Sir Omel also nodded and asked if the mage was sure his plan would work. Harris thought for a moment and did some internal calculations and declared he was certain that it would. Well, if it doesn't, we are going to be in deep trouble, said Brother Stance. Harris looked at Phidias and Yolanda. Are you two okay with this plan? Sure, what do we have to lose? While Phidias quickly responded with, Our lives. She shook her head and advised she was ready. The large men both shrugged and the Knight of Bacchus responded with, Today is as good a day to die as any. Yolanda and the gnome crept around the corner and through the pillars, quickly moving into the shadows on one side. Harris took up a position on the corner, nodding to Omel and Grish as they took up positions behind the pillars. Harris nodded to Brother Stance, who jumped out between the pillars and gave a loud, Hoo-yah! yell. 
The giants could be spotted in their campfire as Brother Stance goaded them into chasing him. A pair of hill giants immediately began to run towards the pillars as the third picked up and hurled a boulder towards the antagonistic monk. The rock struck the ground in front of him, narrowly missing him. Now, yelled Harris, and Stance dropped to the ground. Omel and Grish turned to one side as a mass of sticky strands stretched across the opening over the monk's head, attached to the pillars. The two giants were too close to stop, and the first giant hit the wall of webs right at shin level, causing him to trip and plunge into the ravine just over Brother Stance's head. The second giant attempted to stop, but tripped and rolled through the webs, causing Brother Stance to attempt to dodge, but miscalculating, he went over the side with the giant. Omel and Grish both yelled out, No! just as the third giant lumbered in between them the now unobstructed path. An overhead swing with a club by the large humanoid narrowly missed the pair, causing them to roll out of the way. Regrasping his club, he prepared a lateral swing against the fighters, but he, the giant let out a painful howl and attempted to turn, but his legs gave way. A few stumbles, and the third giant went over the cliff as well, its back leg muscles cut by Yolanda and Phidias. As the third giant screamed, the voice was cut short as it landed on sharp rocks at the bottom of the ravine. Omel and Grish quickly crawled to the edge and peered over the side, hoping for a miracle. As they looked over the edge, they saw the three mangled bodies of the giants, and Grish let out a loud stance and observed movement along the side of the cliff. Part of the ground had been torn asunder, and the agile monk had grabbed a protruding rock with one hand. Swinging gently into the openness, the monk smirked and replied, Can I help you? as he dangled over the edge. Omel, Grish, and Harris all breathed a sigh of relief as Harris tossed the knight a rope who lowered it down to the swinging pilgrim before pulling him up. Everyone okay? asked Grish, followed by nods from everyone. Panting, Brother Stance looked at Harris and Riley remarked, I've changed my mind. I don't like this plan at all. The group laughed as Phidias leaned over the side before releasing a large gob of spit from his lips down onto the impaled giants below. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.